Hey guys, Mammoth Stones is the soap. Going to use the PTFE blade on use number seven. Inside the Saber from Blackland. And this is a Declaration Grooming B9A 24 millimeter brush with a Bristle Brush Works handle. I'm not a big fan of the orange, but to be honest, if you're going to kind of have this pearlescent uh, transparent swirl pattern going on it it's just beautiful and so I'm really enjoying really enjoying that so let's get this brush back in the water it's been soaking for a few minutes I can definitely tell a difference when I'm able to soak this brush as a two-band brush the tips do really like to absorb some water um, it's not jelly, so it's not absorbing a lot of water. However, it, uh, I really like the feel of it if it's been soaked for 10, 15 minutes instead of just three. And I am shaving off a normal 24-hour beard today. The Saber here has this really cool post that's not round, it's flat, and so the threading is only on the two narrow ends. So with this model, you do have to be careful and not over tighten it. It would be possible if you really, really torqued on it, I would imagine, but it's it's not something you're going to do accidentally. And they, the reason he had to do such a narrow slot is because that's how big the slot is on these gem blades and this is the PTFE blade pretty much the only one that people recommend for this kind of razor these SE razors whether it's an old vintage gem razor or a clog proof or uh, you know a 1912 you know those kind of razors or if it's something modern like this saber and this is the level 2 head uh, the base plate and stones is going to be the soap of the evening wonderful woody oh oh man it's it's woody but then there's the those other pieces of it that uh, are kind of like a a nice cologne a manly cologne and it's all works together so well um, just base notes not really anything uh, in the top uh, area that's going to burn off quickly um, oh so nice so I'm going to use that today I'm going to do a 30 second load in just a minute and uh, let me get my face wet alright let's do our load I looked at my load history for this soap and 30 seconds seems like what I should probably go for. Shake most of the water out. Just kind of render it lightly wet. And then uh, 30 seconds. So we'll go at 35 and then stop at 05. The tips on this one are not super soft but they're very comfortable. They're not scrubby. Uh, at all definitely not scratchy or anything like that they're comfortable they're just not as soft as like a silver tip or uh, many of those brushes that have like the two bands that have uh, really soft tips due to the chemical treatment they've been subjected to uh, and I'm curious does this does this type of tip uh, stay that way forever. I, I don't think it does. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it softened after a lot of uses. Oh, that's so good. You can look down in the description of the video, which will have the scent profile and the uh, the notes that were in this. Gorgeous. After the shave, I really enjoyed Southern. Uh, yeah. Southern Paradise. It's really funny. I was going to say Paradise, but it just didn't sound sound right. Just a weird night, I guess. Um, the the uh, liniment here, I really enjoyed using it yesterday, so I'm going to hit it again tonight. 
So let's uh, start. This is the Tusk Soap Base from Mammoth. Wonderful, very high performance, really enjoyable, elastic, slick, creamy, all those good words. Very nice soap base. Oh, and I believe Mammoth has uh, changed their name to House of Mammoth. Also, something cool I was reading up online and as a part of the background of this particular article, they pointed to an event that happened about six months ago. And so I'm kind of late to the party regarding that one event, but apparently, and this happens with our hobby people will buy a limited release type item, whether it's a razor or a soap or whatever, and then they'll try to flip it. They'll try to sell it for a lot more than they paid for it. And so, unfortunately, they take advantage of people who are not as quick on the draw, you know, with their click buttons to buy stuff, you know. And the, the makers don't like that, you know. Um, and there was a guy who flipped, who was trying to flip a tub of mammoth soap. And it was a, it was back when it was kind of a limited release. And there was another limited release that had come out from another vendor at the same time. And this guy was trying to, to flip it for, I don't know, almost twice what it, he had paid for it. And Ben, the man behind Mammoth, got online and outed this guy. And they had, you know, some words to say back and forth. But here's the thing. Ben stayed really classy about it. Um, he didn't attack the guy personally. And you know what he ended up doing? He told everybody something to the effect of, I'm going to make... 24 of these limited edition soaps and I'm going to sell them at not twice the price but um, uh, one and a half times the normal regular price just so that people can come and buy it from me instead of buying it from a flipper and lining their pockets with cash and then he said what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the proceeds I'm going to take the extra money generated and I'm going to give it to a charity. This uh, probably his human trafficking, anti-human trafficking charity that he is a big, a big supporter of. Sure enough, that's what he did. Matter of fact, he may have donated the entire proceeds from the soap, not just over and above what he would have normally sold it for. That's how classy Ben is. He, he countered this guy's douchebaggery and meanness with kindness. And he, of course, he had a kind of a smart aleck, uh, you know, attitude about the whole thing uh, in terms of when he was talking to that guy. You know, he, I think one of his posts even said, yeah, you're right. People should definitely boycott Mammoth, you know, and, um. But yeah, so $1,152, I think, Ben donated. And he, he donated it in the name of Mammoth Flippers. I mean, that's I, I like supporting guys with that kind of character. You know, giving to charity in the, in the light of harassment by some stupid people. Turned it around. <clears throat> Anybody who bought those 24 soaps. All the money they gave went right to charity. That's how cool Ben is. Now this looks terrific. I've got four teaspoons in it. And as you can see, I've just been working on it I've, as I've been telling Ben's cool story. This is a soap that I can take to quite elastic 
of a level. And now it look like, looks like I'm kind of there. So let's go for it. Get my face wet again. We're in early March now. It's crazy how quickly 2020 went. Winter is going to start coming to a close. We're starting to have some better temperature days this past uh, week or so. But by and large, we've had a really cold February and, and March. And I have really enjoyed having nice cold tap water. Sometimes I don't even need to go to the fridge and put some ice in it, you know? And I've enjoyed the very cold, refreshing shave rinse water. Especially when you have a razor that is maybe treating you a little bit aggressive. That calming and soothing cold water. Sure, it's bracing, but in terms of calming down a patch of skin, your, your, a bit of your neck that has been kind of roughed up, or you've had maybe a little bit of poor technique on or something, that cold water is just very calms the, uh, uh, it reduces the swelling reduces puffiness, calms the skin down, very, very soothing and nice. That's why they put menthol in soaps to try to get that same effect without having cold temperatures. Well, this smells terrific. All right, I played around. I had two shaves with this blade in the bullet tip to try it out. And now I'm back to the wonderful saber. With the grain for me on my face means north to south. And I'm gonna focus on having a small blade angle with a normally my double-edged right angle might be something like this but I want to try to open up that handle reduce and which also reduces the blade angle and that turns these kinds of shaves into something comfortable and close And we'll just see when the performance starts dropping off with this blade. With my DE blades, they're, they're thinner than this. And so they last, they last me a lot longer, I believe. I believe that's what I'm going to be discovering as this one ages. But we'll just see how long. Yeah, this lather is doing a great job. Nice protection. Creamy. There's a TV show on that I'm, I don't know when it came out. I think it's relatively recent called Resident Alien. I didn't even know it existed until a week ago, and I've been catching up on it. It doesn't have too many seasons that have aired. I don't know if that's because it's a new series, or if it just didn't quite get re uh, renewed, but I 
think maybe because it's a new series. I'm really enjoying it. It's, uh, the Navigator, the pilot on Firefly, is the main character, and he's a he's an alien who's come to a small Colorado mountain town, and he's taken over the body of the local doctor, or a local doctor. And it's just hilarious. He's he's such a great actor. And there are some other the, the lines that are the writing for this is so clever. There's just one little boy in the town who can see through his alien disguise. He says you know, only like one in a thousand people can actually recognize him as an alien. And so he's tried to kill the boy three times. But it's so funny. Um, and uh, he was making out his to-do list, you know, I need to stop and get some bandages. And he kind of talks in a, a alien robotic voice. I need to get some bandages. I need to um, help Mrs. Smith with her bronchitis. And then I need to remember to kill the boy on my way home. You know, something like that. It's just very funny. They... Um, a lot of the alien type shows, you know, that we've had come on the television in the past decades. They're taking, they've clearly watched some of those. And they're taking uh, some of those same uh, bits. And they are just doing them differently. Where normally if an alien is trying to live in a town, then, uh, you know, they try to hide from the people who can see them. But this guy's like, you know, they're driving in the car and the parents are in the back seat and they're all talking. And then, uh, and then he looks at the boy and he goes, I'm going to kill you. you know? But it's hilarious. In between talking to the parents and things like that, you know, just very open, you know, about it. All right. So third pass now. And the little boy would respond back with, give it your best shot, you avocado headed weirdo or something like that. The uh, the sheriff of the town is this African American guy, and they are really playing with the stereotypes, countering you know many of them. You know, like first episode, the guy comes into town. You can call me Big Black, <laughs> and then the white guy goes, "No, I can't do that." <laughs> and uh, you know, he's joking about how, man, I wish I had a serial killer in this town. That would that would help, you know, brighten up my day. Help me to have a little bit of something to do, you know. And as always with these kind of alien type shows, they're using it as a vehicle to Kind of take a look at the human condition and in between trying to, oh, because one of the main premises is that the alien is in that small town because his, he was on a mission to like destroy the earth with a device and then he had some kind of crash landing and the device was messed up and it's, it's up in the hills under the snow and he's got to search for it and find it before the snow melts. <laughs> One time, <laughs> anyway, he does this monologue, you know, a lot of times, this inner monologue, you'll hear it, and he says, I haven't had very much time to, to search the, search through the snow for my ship parts because of the Law and Order Marathon. <laughs> <laughs> so he's falling for some of the human things, you know. <laughs> a 
Resident Alien, I believe, is the name. So that's three passes. Let's get a good rinse and see how everything went. Yeah, again, that's just a really nice shave. Very happy with that. Close, uh, comfortable. I, I did detect just a little bit of potential tenderness, and so that tells me that the the blade and the alignment of it in the razor, the, the way the top cap and everything is arranged is just so close to being uh, that perfect middle ground between cutting closely but doing it comfortably. And, and so that's neat. Um, I might switch to the level one and see how it does. Uh, I got another two passes still left in and this is a wonderful, look how elastic that lather is. That's just perfect lather today, the way I like it at least. And we are looking at, my total of five passes was made from four teaspoons of water and a 30 second load. That's pretty much how I like to do it. I like to have a one extra pass. Two is not too bad. Oh yeah, and while I have a nice wet Matter of fact, I'm going to wet my skin just a little bit more so that this, uh, this liniment is kind of thick. So it's nicer if it can go on with a little bit of wetness. Oh, that tea smell. Sweet with some lemon. Nice. So I think I'm about to see the last current episode of that one. I'll have to find something else to watch. Excellent. All right, well, this shave went really well. Kind of expected it to with so many good pieces. Water here is hard, so this lather has no problem in dealing with a uh, hard water. The uh, liniment here, as you can see, has colored my skin just a little bit of white, but that will be absorbed in a matter of 10 minutes, and it'll be gone. It'll leave my skin really nice feeling. Very good. So just going to clean up a little bit. So the closeness in the trouble spot here is very nice very close just see some tips maybe a couple hairs that have a little bit of length on them um, but that's something just a quick touch up would fix if i wanted to fix that so really happy and pretty much almost baby butt smooth in the other parts of my face that are you know shave a little easier so uh stones man wow it's uh wonderful um and so we put the seventh shave on this razor and it's still going very nicely so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how many uses we can put on this guy might do a double edge shave next I've got that Gibbs razor I haven't tried out yet I've also got that everyday razor that has a new handle that I uh, I'm looking forward to to trying giving the head a different balance um, that I think might suit me a little better hey I just saw the sterling the Sterling Soap Company released their stainless steel razor um, here recently. It's about $160 or so, depending on what uh, options you choose in terms of getting both base plates. The aggressive, um, the regular base plate, which is aggressive, and then the ultra high aggressive base plate. Um, I'm glad they chose three handle designs. The first one they came out with was uh, a lot of the knurling toward the base, toward the bottom of the handle, and then it was kind of narrow and thin in uh, quite a good ways, and that's exactly where I would be holding the razor. And so I was very happy to see them come out with another one that, that had the, right where these stripes, these grooves are right here, that's where they put some knurling there. 
and then they had an empty spot, and then they put some knurling at the end. I think that one was called the Dallas. I think that's just gorgeous. Um, and I, I want to buy one, but here's the thing. Even the average base plate, not the ultra-high aggressive one, obviously that one's not for me, but even the average one is probably too aggressive for me. I'd love to try one out, though, but... Um, they said if you find the uh, like a, a Gillette Slim, a vintage Gillette adjustable set at a nine, if you find that too aggressive, then um, you probably won't enjoy the even the basic head of the Sterling because Rod said he made that razor. It was made by him. And it was made for people like him who want a really efficient, aggressive razor. And you'll probably be riding the cap, you know, to get that efficiency, that uh, good cutting that you want. And so it's probably not for me. But it just is beautiful. And I also want to support him and his business. But I don't think I'll be uh, picking one of those up. Um, just want to let you guys know, anybody out there who likes really aggressive razors, um, it's 100% American. It took a while to bring to the market because he, he's got integrity. And he found out during some of the building process that the people we started out using, they contracted out uh, to a non-American company to build part of the razor. And that was important for him. Uh, and so he, um, he just wouldn't use, uh, wouldn't use them and went with somebody else. And it took, it set back things. It was by several months he was planning trying to get it released at a certain time and wasn't able to do it uh, so I, I respect him a lot for that and he likes those aggressive razors he said he usually does his shaving in one pass with some buffing or two passes and rarely ever does more than two passes and that's definitely not me right uh, and so that's why he likes a really aggressive razor uh, so and there we go. Uh, check that out on Sterling's website if you uh, if you like the aggressive razors. It looks gorgeous. It looks really nice. The head design isn't anything uh, new or uh, spectacular or anything like that. I think the handles are really steal the show in terms of the looks of it. The polish is really amazing. Um, almost a mirror finish for that price razor. I think. That's kind of remarkable. It's not. He he mentions this himself, and says that he's not going for a Wolfman quality perfection in terms of mirror polishing, but it's near that, and he's able to give it a, give it away for that one hundred and sixty dollars or one hundred and eighty dollars. If you order both base plates, I think it's one hundred and eighty dollars. Um, but if you order two, then it's just the one base plate. Then it's uh, I think more like one hundred and fifty or one hundred and sixty or something like that. And uh, uh, he said it would have doubled the cost to, to have that better mirror finish. And most people don't need that. And, and so it look, the finish looks just tremendous. Really, really nice. All right, guys. I think that'll be it. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. You guys uh, have a good night. Hope there's been something in this video to help you out. And we'll watch this SE blade and see how far he goes. Take care.